In this video, I'm going to be showing you Coagents, which is a new offering from the team over at Copilot Kit. And what Coagents allow you to do are to seamlessly integrate your LangGraph agents into the Copilot application of whatever you might be building. So what's unique with this solution is they've really abstracted away a lot of the plumbing that would have been required to set up between your LangGraph cognitive architecture, as well as the front end application layer of whatever you might be building. So with Coagents, it allows you to easily have a generative UI that can be, whether it's streamed back or sent back from particular nodes within your LangGraph architecture. If there are particular nodes within your application that require streaming responses, you'll be able to easily set that up. Additionally, there is the ability to tie into these really convenient hooks where you'll be able to set the state from your client side application and vice versa from the LangGraph architecture. If the agent determines something where the state needs to be updated on the user application side, you can send that across and then vice versa. If there is a piece of the UI that your application needs to send that context back and through to your LangGraph agent, it can do that. So it's really flexible in terms of updating state and it effectively creates this modern syntax on how you can set this up within whether it's a React application, Next.js application, as well as the state of the art and growing infrastructure that's being built around LangGraph right now. Now, I think one of the biggest takeaways with Coagents is this idea of having the human in a loop. So last and finally, where Coagents can be useful is with Agent QA. And this is a really great demonstration of it. What we're used to with typical chatbots is we're used to a lot of text in and text out. We'll type something, we'll get a response back, but we're starting to enter more of an era where we'll be able to control more of our application with the UI and share that application state with the agent. Say in this case, in this example, you want to book a flight from Amsterdam to Barcelona. You'll be able to select the desired date, and that desired date will be ultimately passed to your agent. So it has the context in terms of determining next steps or doing that lookup process on the back end to send you some further information, whether it's pricing or times of day that you want to fly out or whatever it might be. So with Coagents, it's effectively removed a lot of the hard work that would have involved setting up the shared state management, whether it's the state streaming between the agent and the front end of the application, the agent QA process. All of these different interactions you would have had to wire up yourself. And with Coagents, it's a very easy hook that you can tie into to interact between the LangGraph architecture as well as your application. With all of these capabilities being able to easily tie into your application, it'll make things like real-time interactions easier, state updates between the agent as well as the user, and just overall improving responsiveness and adaptability with whatever your application might be. To get started with Copilot Kit, you can head on over to their repo. I'll put the links within the description of the video as well. The first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to install the repo. Once the repo is installed, there are a number of different examples that you can check out here. I'm going to be checking out the AI researcher example here, which is a minimalistic perplexity clone. So you'll be able to see how to set up that backend architecture within LangGraph as well as binding it within a Next.js application and be able to see how everything works in between one another. And what's great with this is they have quite a few of different examples. They have what looks to be almost 10 different examples that you can check out and try all of this out. Once everything's pulled down, we're going to go within the examples here and we're going to start with this AI researcher example. We'll just CD into examples, go into co-agent AI researcher. And then within this, you do have the readme if you'd like to open that. And if you have a Markdown viewer, you'll be able to see it here as well. If you just want to look at the readme here. And then once we have that, we're first going to set up our agent. First thing you can do is just go ahead and poetry install everything. And you can go within the agent directory and then you can create a .env. Within the .env, we're going to create two different keys. We're going to have one for OpenAI as well as Tavily. If you haven't used Tavily before, it's a pretty popular use case within the Lang chain. And what it allows you to do is you can send in queries like what you might Google, for instance, with something, and it will be able to send back relevant information about that query. This is similar to a SERP API but it's definitely built with the idea of LLMs in mind. It's able to give you natural language context, as well as some sort of common questions that your application might have, whether it's follow-up questions or different answers, as well as some other useful metadata that could be useful within your application. To get started, you can just make a free account. And then once you're within the dashboard, you can just make a new API key. 
Once you have the API key, you can paste it in here. For OpenAI, it's pretty straightforward. You can search for your API key, generate an API key, and paste it in there as well. Just paste those in, save it out. Now that we have those, we're ready to run our demo. You can just poetry run demo. We see that this is running on port 8000. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're just going to get started with our UI. We'll just get with the directory here. We'll go within UI. The first thing we can do is p npm install everything, or alternatively, you can npm install everything if you'd like. From here, you can grab the OpenAI API key from the previous step if you'd like. Here, just like we did with an agent, we'll just create a .env. Then within that .env, just paste in the OpenAI API key. Once we've done that, we can p npm run dev. And then that will start the front end Next.js application. I'll just move this over onto my screen and we should hopefully see what looks to be a simplistic perplexity style answer engine here. Here we can just put in the question. We see that it's searching for the cars or searching the web. And this is a good illustration on what's happening with co-agents. It's streaming out the different states that's updating this UI component. Once we have all of the information from the Tavoli API, we're going to extract that information and ultimately it's going to be summarized for us within this answer. Then once that answer is streamed out, we do see that those references come back and stream out also on the right hand side there. So here it happens relatively quickly, but there are a number of subtle nuances that you probably caught looking at the example. You saw the state that was being updated. There was the loading state. There was also the progress that was being updated for the particular nodes and the DOM elements that also correlate to what's happening in the background within the LangGraph architecture. And then finally, it streamed out both the answers as well as the references for us. It's quite a bit of work. So to set this up yourself, so I built an application that was similar to a perplexity style app, and I probably built it four or five times before I settled on something that was analogous to work, right? So. This took me a few different tries in terms of different implementations. Now, had I had something like co-agents and co-pilot kit that I would have been able to leverage, that whole process probably would have been able to be easier as well as arguably more robust if I were to make it say a production application, because there's different aspects within that, a ton of strengths of being able to integrate something like LangGraph as well as co-agents and co-pilot kit, because it really abstracts away a ton of different pieces that would have otherwise been potentially pretty complicated. The last thing that I want to show you is loading it up within LangGraph Studio. Right now, at time of recording, LangGraph Studio is only supported on Mac OS, but it is coming to Linux as well as Windows. But to get started with LangGraph Studio, you will have to have Docker running. Then you can just select that agent folder of where you've built out your LangGraph architecture. It will install all the dependencies and start your agent where you'll be able to see a visual representation of what your agent is. And this is very helpful. If you haven't used the studio before, it's essentially a graphical interface where you can see these different nodes of what all the different steps are within the application. Here we see the step node. We see that the targets of the step node are either going to be the summarization node or the search node. And then depending on the different steps of what your application is doing, it will route through these different nodes and potentially go through multiple steps depending on the architecture that's set up. So there's quite a bit that you can do within LangGraph Studio, but it's just really neat to be able to see that visual representation of whatever your application is doing. Last, what I want to show you is a simple example on how to get started with co-agents, co-pilot kit, as well as LangGraph. In this example, you see this simple Next.js application, and what it's doing is it's taking in an input and it's translating that output into three different languages. Let's just first take a look at this in LangGraph Studio. So we have our starting node, we have our translation node, and then what it's returning for us is this schema of all of the different languages as well as their respective keys on where they're going to map within the UI. So to get started, I'm gonna show you the co-agent starter kit. This is within the examples directory, and it is arguably the easiest example on how to get started to really understand the fundamentals of what's happening. First, we're going to start within the agent directory, just like we had in the perplexity example. You can also add in a .env as well as your API key from OpenAI. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import a number of different modules that we're going to be using. From there, we're just going to define that we're going to have our translations that are going to be strings, as well as extending that within the agent state and also mentioning that the input is going to be a string. That's going to be essentially the hello world that you saw in the previous example. First, we're going to set up our main translation function. Within here, we're going to be passing in our agent state, which like we mentioned, is going to be the input. 
all that this function is really doing is we have a OpenAI API call and we have a tool which is going to specify the translation, but we're going to have very specific system instructions. So here we're going to specify you're a helpful assistant that translates text into different languages with just a couple other details here, like the language and what have you. And then we're also going to be passing in the input that we had from the user. From here, we're going to check whether the schema that we have back from OpenAI does have the tool calls. If it has the tool calls, what we're going to do is we're going to be sending that back as the response. Alternatively, if for whatever reason the tool calls weren't invoked, we're going to be sending back the message. From there, we can just set up the workflow within the graph. This is the code representation of what within this graph here. So arguably one of the most simple examples, you can add the node. So this is the node that we just worked through. You can define your entry point, which in this case, it's the same node that we had just defined. And, and then finally, you can add an edge that specifies that this is the end of the line graph architecture invocation. And then finally, from here, we're just going to initialize the memory that we're going to be using with. This is going to be how you can compile what we had just worked through. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to be exposing that architecture so it's a consumable endpoint that we can query. Within this, we're going to be referencing the .env to use the OpenAI variable that we had just declared. Then we're going to be importing fast APIs. So this is going to be what we use to create our web server. We're going to be importing Copilot Kit for the integration with fast API. And then we're going to be essentially just initializing. We're going to be setting up the SDK within Copilot Kit. And within here, we're going to define the LangGraph agent that we had just set up. So you can pass in multiple agents if you'd like, and each agent, you can specify the name, the description, as well as the agent. From there, what you can do is you can just add this fast API endpoint. And in this case, we're just going to have it at the route of Copilot Kit. And then finally, you can just invoke the method to start the server and expose that so it's consumable from where you're going to be interacting with it. Next, I'm going to walk you through the primary building blocks on how to get started with integrating this within a Next.js application. You can go within the UI folder and within the UI folder, you can open up app. There's gonna be three main files that we're gonna focus on. So the page.tsx, the translator.tsx component, as well as the route.ts within the API slash copilot kit folder. First, I'm gonna show you the backend route. And this is gonna be what communicates with that fast API server and ultimately that LangGraph architecture that we have set up on the back end. First, we're gonna set up our dependencies. We're gonna import next requests, then we're gonna just structure a couple of things that we're gonna be using from Copilot Kit as well as OpenAI. We'll initialize the OpenAI client. Then from there, we're gonna create a service adapter. And within this, we're gonna be passing in our initialized OpenAI client. Once you have that, you have a couple different options for your base URL. So you can predetermine it within the .env if you'd like, or alternatively, it is port 8000. If you're pushing this to production, just make sure that you change out the remote action URL to whatever the fast API endpoints URL is. Next, it can be helpful just to log out the base URL just to make sure that you are routing to the proper place. For instance, maybe you have localhost running on a different port or what have you. This can help the process to determine if there are any issues. From there, we're going to initialize the copilot runtime with the remote actions configuration. Here, all that we have to do to set up this remote actions is configure our base URL. From there, we're going to set up the request handler and we're going to be using the copilot runtime and service adapter that we had just defined a little bit earlier within the file. Within this, we're going to be passing in the runtime. We're going to be passing in the service adapter, and then we're also going to be passing in the endpoint, like I had mentioned. And then finally, we're just going to return this request, and this is going to be what ultimately gets sent to the front end of our application. Next, we're going to go within the page.tsx. So within the page.tsx, we're going to be using a client side component. So since we're using Next.js, just make sure to specify that at the top. And then within this, we're going to be importing Copilot Kit. We're going to be importing also the component of Translator, which I'll go into in just a moment. And then all that we need to do is we need to specify the runtime URL. In this case, it's going to be API slash Copilot Kit, but this could really be whatever your production runtime URL is. And then you also have to specify the agent that you're going to be using. From there, within the Translator TSX, we're going to again specify that this is going to be a client side component. We're going to be importing a handful of things from Copilot Kit. We're going to be setting up an interface. So this is going to be to make sure that everything is type compliant and it maps to what we had set up in the previous step within our agent. 
And then from here, we can just set up our component. So this is going to be what gets rendered visually to the DOM. Again, we're going to be specifying the name of the agent. And then we also have the initial state. When someone first loads the screen, you could also have this be an empty string if you'd like. From there, we're going to get our loading state from our use copilot chat logout our state. And this is optional. Obviously, you can remove this if you'd like, especially once you go to production. And then from there, we can set up the handler function to run our translation agent. Here, we're specifying translate to all the different languages. And within this, you will see once I start to add some of the JSX, that within this, the translate agent state is going to be the input value. And then it's going to be setting the state of what the input value is based on when someone's typing on their keyboard effectively. We also have the button that the user can click. This is going to be what actually invokes that handle translate handler. In this case, we're also going to show the loading state directly on the button. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to display the translations if they're available. Here, we're just going to wait for if the state updates and if there is the translation agent state dot translations, that's going to be what determines whether this JSX gets rendered in the DOM. Finally, you can render this copilot pop if we see here. We have our interface, but then also on the right hand side here, we have this where I can say translate the words. Hello. And this is the beauty of Copilot Kit. You can have your natural language interface where a user can ask for certain things to happen within the UI. And then depending on what you've set up within your LangGraph architecture, as well as the application layer itself, you'll be able to build these interactive experiences that, that really weren't even possible even several months or a year ago. That's pretty much it for this video. I know we definitely covered a lot, but I hope this can act as a resource on how you can leverage Copilot Kit, CoAgents, as well as LangGraph and build out these end-to-end -end applications. I also wanna thank the team over at Copilot Kit for partnering on this video. If you found this video useful, please comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.